How you doing guys? This is Hybrid Steel. Welcome to another Hydria 2.0 video. So today I sort of put, well I say today, a, a little while ago I put out a little challenge about if we can build small. So I put it into the community, I showed my build and in fairness probably not the best optimised. A couple of things I lacked in the way of like how I sort things out. But then there was a person on there called Black Drake. And Black Drake basically he said well, hey what about trying to do this? And he altered the belts a bit and I looked at it and just went it's perfect so thank you very much black drake for this and basically it's almost like a collaboration idea it was actually fantastic so the idea is to build a sorting plant so the cheapest it could possibly be on an actual grid now when people say oh yeah well i'm automated in about a grand this is basically what they mean when they've automated for a thousand a thousand coin you went out and bought a harvester you bought a drill and then you put a bucket on the floor and it basically shoots out gold. And that's all well and good. That's if you want to if that's how you want to play it, it's all good. But that means you've got the basis there to actually build a sorting plant. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this build, and then I'm gonna show you it actually working on a big build. And then from there you'll get a gist of what how this actually works fairly well. And you don't have to put a lot of effort into it as well. So most of you will probably start off with something like this. This is, I would say, the beginner sort of, hey, I've got a drill, I've got a harvester. I sort of think that this is how it works, and it's all good. Now, in order to get a floating bit of dirt under there, but put a brick down first. So literally chuck one of these underneath here, take the harvester off, pop your dirt on there, and then set the drill, and then take it off, and you're fine. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the actual build itself. I'm going to try and give you a price rundown as well of how much things have actually cost, just so you know how much you're going to be sort of like aiming for. But in order to fill this like properly, you'll need about 5,500 to have the whole thing set up so you don't have to do anything else. All right, and that's all good. So I'm going to assume most of you are looking at this going, right, uh, yeah, I sort of know what I'm doing, but a little bit of help would be appreciated. Here we go then. So I'm doing this in creative mode. The reason why I'm doing this in creative mode is because if not, it means I have to have a pile of pipes and a pile of this and a pile of that. All of this stuff is literally what we're using. So we're using the drills, we've got the bricks, we've got the piping, we've got the conveyor belts, and we're going to stick it all in now. We've also got our intake with four. We've also got our intake over here. No boosters, as this is a beginner set. You can upgrade later on. Basically, a sixty is it a sixty or a hundred iron, and then but you can get yourself a booster and chuck it on your belt. It's all right. So. What we're going to do is we're going to replace this straight belt with a T-pipe. Because we can't clip through harvesters, we literally have to go around. So we're going to take this out, but don't worry, we'll use that later, it's fine. Then we're going to need one, two, three, four corners. Now the four corners are literally to get around the harvester, so we're going to pop this there, and then we're going to pop this there. And then we are good there now if that's as far as basically this is a good way of sort of like starting out to learn how the basics of piping works when it comes to getting around a harvester and your first conveyor belt should be a straight belt and basically it's 220 quid or 220 coin whack yourself on there and there we go fun fun and dandy so this will run you put a little bucket here and you'll just collect stuff off the conveyor belt and there you go your first successful automated sort of automated plant because obviously it's not going to be better boiling anything but you can shoot pans up to the jewelers and not have to worry about too much and it's all good so we've got to this point where you can have a sort of semi-automated plant it's going to shoot it's going to harvest it's going to be good you've got your pans set up underneath and bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt now if you're like me you've probably went out and bought a cork or a valve because corks and valves are a really good way to stop that dripping noise that comes out of that pipe continuously until you've patched it up and it's all good but one thing that I, I personally I would go for right about now is this so the reason why this is going to help you is number one you've got you've gone out and spent 460 on a gem polisher these are found in Bridgeport in conveyor nation and it's all good now the reason why you're going to want to, uh, this is because when it comes to putting sorters out, maybe later you might be like me, you might actually have a sorting section for your gems. Now a lot, loads of people have a go at me for it, like having a, an actual separate sorter for gem compressor. It's like, why are you doing this? Why don't you just put it at the end of the line? It's an afterthought and I'd prefer it all to be in a nice place. But for now we're actually going to be using it as an afterthought because, well is the joys of life but gem compressor the reason why you put this well the, the actual gem polisher is it will make you more money gems that are cut so you actually see the gemstone instead of just a stone with little bits of like color on it uh will are, are actually worth more so if you can cut your gems number one you don't have to do it again so the wet stone goes out the bit you don't need a wet stone anymore and it's all good so having the polisher means that you can build jewelry you can build all the other stuff and it's all right so you can put your gems in a separate pan and be be happy or sell them all 
it's worth more. It's all good. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to evolve this and we're going to bring in the full belt pot. The full belts are going to cost you about two, nearly three grand, 2,800 in that sort of ballpark. So we've already bought one of the conveyor belts and that's okay. We've already bought a gem polisher. That's quite a lot of money that's already been taken care of. What we need now is we need the pipeline. So I'm going to show you the pipeline. Then we'll bring the belts in and we're going to be all right. And uh, there you go. That, that's the whole pipeline. That's it. That's all you need. And this will create the smallest sorting plant you can think of. Now, I know a lot of people would just build a conveyor belt and just have bits falling off, and that, that's fair enough. But if you want it all within a very tight, compact space, and you don't have like a massive plot of land, or you've dug loads of little holes everywhere, then this is actually as small as we can get it. We're actually working on four concrete blocks instead of six. The limit I ever had was six, so anything on this six block, as you can see, the actual har the harvester and the drill are within the six block radius. But our actual sorting plant is going to be on four, which is tiny in comparison. So we haven't put we haven't got anything else, and with all the with it being actually on four belts, uh, four blocks instead of six, is that we're actually going to be putting our we can we can have this and evolve our smelters onto this, and we can actually evolve like from there as well. So that's where we're going to be sitting. I'm going to put the belts in next. This is going to cost us about 2,800. And then from there, you'll sort of see the actual plan behind this. But Hydra is all about ev evolution. It's not about like going out and buying all the stuff straight away. It's about building up and building up and learning how the game works. All grand. All right, so. Okay, sorters are in place. Now, the reason why the pads are facing this way is because whatever you put on top of this pad here basically sends a signal to this and it pushes whatever off onto here all good now if you're a little bit poor and you haven't got uh, like furnaces and stuff but you have got access to pans what you can actually do to start with is just pop a pan down on each on each of the areas and go from there by now i would have expected you to have like a little gold nugget a little iron nugget maybe a claudium and some uh, and a shard thing and basically they sit on top I've got iron, I've got gold, and I've got a shard. That's At the moment, unfortunately, that's basically all I'm going to need. So, I'm going to pop my iron up on here. Now, I'll do this in chronological order for all those people out there who go, Are well, you doing it wrong? Because apparently, when I set up a sorter, it's wrong. Even though I do it the way I've always done it for the last two years. And no one ever had a go at me then. Yeah, everyone has their own way of sorting things out. My way is gems, shards, gold, iron, and cloudium. That's just how I do things, but we'll do it in the order so I don't get... You're doing it wrong! So, what we're going to do is, unfortunately, don't have a little nugget of Cloudium, which does suck. And Cloudium would normally sit on this one, so what's actually going to happen here is the sorter is going to sort 50-50. So it's going to go this way, and it's going to go this way. Now, if you can't stand that constant dripping noise from your pipes, you've probably still got your cork that you used in the original pipe, Chuck it in this hole. Just shut it up completely and be done. And it's all good. But for now, unfortunately, we have to run the belts like this. Now, this means, you know, we're probably going to be sitting here for a little while going, yep, yep, yep. And you know, you just, it's going to get a little bit boring and a little bit mundane. I'm not going to put you through that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to explain very quickly. What will happen is that this will turn on, it will shoot dirt straight into the harvester, the harvester will shoot out a random element and, and we'll go from there. The random element could be iron, it could be gold, it could be a shard, it could be anything that is in this game. And from there it will find its way. If this if it's iron it will shoot into this bucket, if it's gold it shoots into that one, if it's shards it goes into this one, and if it's a 50-50 spit at the end between gems and cloudium, it will go into any of these two pipes. From that point, if you do manage to get a bit of cloudium, put it on this one. Straight away. Do it. Because then all your gems just end up in here. You've got cut gems. It's all good. And you're slowly but surely building up that little means of money that you really needed. Now, if you don't want to be doing this and like sorting pans out does suck. And I completely agree. It does. But for the start of the game, it's generally not that bad. What we're going to do is we're going to take an upgrade, which is basically four furnaces and four crucibles. That's all you're going to need. So here are my four furnaces. And what we're going to do is because it was a feature that we actually enjoyed and we liked, um, you're able to clip through the floor with a furnace. And this basically just heats up the section at the top. The reason why we asked for this as a feature is because when you put crucibles on top of a furnace, they wobble around. right, And they don't sit straight. It's very hard to get it to actually sit perfectly, especially when you're dealing with this, 
All right. So that is that's the reason why it's in the game. It part a lot of it comes down to convenience, and a lot of it comes down to the fact that we wanted it still in the game because, yes, okay, realism is a thing, but this is a computer game. So if you're able to stick a furnace in the floor and then you're able to put a crucible on top of that, the crucible will sit straight, it'll sit perfectly, you can line up everything, and it is all good. All right, so that's what we would have, that's what we're doing. We're setting this up so your furnace is actually under the concrete. You've set up your crucibles. I'm going to assume you have a bit of Cloutium on the end of this, right? So Cloutium is going to come into here. Shards are going to come into here, and basically you're all done. You're probably, at this point, still working on the fact that all your gems are going into a pan. All right, that's fine. So, like I said, for the way that I would normally do this, I'd have a sorter already set up, ready for gems. So, that would just be something I would have on the sidelines. I actually have one on the sideline. Well, no, I don't. What I can do is, if I really wanted to, I would put one on the sideline. Well, it's all good. Don't worry. I, I, it's weird. I get actually criticism for that, even though it's in the game. And you can do what you like. But, there you go. It's all good. Anyways... So this is this is your like basic lineup without going into like you know more expensive smelters and everything else. It does get a bit more. It gets more expensive from this point on. So this at the moment is going to cost you about five grand. All right, about five and a half, let's say, just in case you extend out or you want to do something else. But this is the smallest, most compact build that I could really think of, and it helped from Black Drake as well. Now, if you are if you do want to attach a compressor to this line. You take your pan away, and then we're going to take this conveyor belt off. All right. The reason we're going to take this conveyor belt off is because we actually have to take this pipe out. And we have to put our T pipe back in. And then from there, we can put our conveyor, we can put our thingy on here. And then we get our gem compressor. And the gem compressor has to be plugged in this way round. All right, because the intake is on the back. Alright, so we're going to put this down. Now, as of recording, there have been people who have said that their compressors don't work properly. Unfortunately, I think it's just a bug. Um, the only different, the only way that I can see fixing it, and I know it sounds a bit like cheaty, is because you've already bought it and you're like, oh, it doesn't work, log out of your game and log back in and see if that works. Right? Obviously, you have to have a polisher on your line as well to make this work. So you have your polisher on, it codes with cut gems. If that doesn't work, log out of your game, hit the creative button when you load your game, go and get yourself a magic wand, duplicate it, so you literally pick up a magic wand, all right, left click on the compressor, uh, on the compressor so you get another one, and then right click on the old one. So yeah, it could just be, it, it is just a bug. If you are getting this bug, head to the Foulball Hangover Discord, which is pretty much the official Hydroneer Discord, and then basically log the bug there and it can be sorted out from there. If people don't report it to them and you're putting in my comments, Max doesn't read my comments, so go and chuck it in the Foulball Hangover Discord. It'll get sorted a lot faster. Trust me. Bug, he does listen to bugs because it's 2.0. He's literally fixing as much as he can straight away. So, this is like the ideal setup that you're going to want for right at the beginning of the game. It's small, it's simple, and it's effective. And it does everything. Now I'm going to show you this, this sorting system in play. Okay, as you can see, same, same sorting plant. Okay, we've got our Cloudium, we've got Shards, we've got Gold, and we've got Iron, and we've set it up the exact same way. It's cheap, it's effective, and it's all good. The plus side to this is all I really had to do was change the Harvester out into the Tier 2 Harvester, so I now have a, a spare T1. Now, the reason why I have a Tier 2 Harvester is because if you follow me in my stream, then you know that we're upgrading, and we're get, going down to a certain point. The only downside to having this sorted plant up here and not anywhere else is, you know, obviously my filters are up here, which I've got no control over that. And of, uh, the other part of it is that I'm building underground. The reason why I'm building underground is I've taken all of my advice that I've given to you and I'm basically going deeper. The problem with building up top is you get less money, so we're, I'm digging underground. So under here, we have all these, re we have tier one drills ready to go. Let me just turn my gamma up. So we have tier 1 drills all lined up and ready to go. All of these shoot onto this one conveyor belt and it goes all the way up onto the sorting belt itself so I don't have to worry about sorting anymore. And if you did see into my stream, we're actually creating another pipeline down because down there is where I'm going to put my tier 2 portion of this game. Now, I'm doing this all live, so you can ask me questions, you can do everything else. So if I, t if I go live 
and I'm actually physically talking to people live on camera with the actual I'm doing this in build then you know that's the best time to get hold of me if you ever wanted to ask me a question straight up now chat does go a little bit faster i'm going to be putting slow mode on very soon and it's just so other people can actually sort of like get in there and ask the set like questions that's needed but this 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 is why i built this build this is what from that from that conversation i had with black drake and we put this up and it was like you know what actually this is bloody good it's efficient it's small it doesn't take a lot of effort and it's it's modular Basically, it means if I wanted to, I could like I, I could have like a little build up here that's like turning up, you know, dirt from up here. I could just feed it straight into here as well. So I could have a little build, feed that in so it's making more money and more everything else. Increases my chances of getting more Cloutium and more everything else. Because obviously Cloutium works on like, we need Cloutium to upgrade to drill to level twos. The bigger the nugget, the better. But the more drills, the better. So if you've got like lots of drills underground hitting into Cloutium, it's all good. But if you've got just more drills overall, even though, yes, there's going to be small nuggets, but those small nuggets do build up over time. So like I said, as a starting off plot, it's cheap, it's small, it's compact. Later on into the game, when you want to evolve out, keep the same design. It's easy to mess around with. It really is. And you don't have to really worry too much. The next evolution from this point, and I'm going to be honest, I probably will do this in a live stream at some point, is to basically just have a little switch where I can turn like automatic smelters on. So I'd have a belt actually filtering out all the stuff from putting it up to here because I can't be bothered to keep walking. Mainly just through laziness, but we'll figure it out as we go. But yeah, that's the plan. So I hope you guys have uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, hit the like, subscribe, notification button below for all other updates. I go live streams most Saturdays, and I'm usually at the moment putting like four to five hours into just building and chatting and just basically really just enjoying the community as a whole. And I want to say thank you very much to every single person out there who subscribed, who likes, who watches, and who comments. Because without me, without you guys actually doing all that. I'd probably still be here going, I don't know what I'm doing. So thank you very much for kicking by. I'll see you another one. Peace out. Have fun. Enjoy everything you guys do. A boom. Fist bump to you.